and worse. Um, that means if there is no digital competence, they cannot uh, uh, do their banking service online, they cannot order their travels, they cannot communicate with the tax authorities online, and they cannot Skype with their grandchildren or children or whatever. Uh, so in our modern, city, uh, modern society today, this is a great challenge. Um, because digital competence is, uh, has become a key competence today. And on the other hand, when we have the digital competence, it gives us many new opportunities, which we will talk about in this webinar. Uh, before I hand over to Aina, I just want to say one more thing about digital competence. Um, of course, a lot of courses are going on nowadays. People learn how to use computers, how to be online, how to use the smartphones. There are many courses. Uh, but uh, if we don't use our devices every day, uh, we forget about it. Um, because digital competence, like other competences, has to be maintained. Um, I just uh, realized this very much when the other day I had visitors from um, a Norwegian association here in my office. It's uh, an association called Senior Net. Um, and they are very concerned about this digital competence with the seniors, especially. Um, they said that, okay, our members learn how to, uh, they are digital competent for one day but then they don't maintain it and they forget about it. And then they are in the same problem. So they ask us, can you help us to give them some, some other courses, uh, with, uh, something they are particularly interested in so that they can get used to it to be online. Uh, like photography, like genealogy, it could be flowers, it could be birds, it could be local history, anything that they are particularly interested in. And it could also be local society and local activities. And then we are getting close to, uh, uh, to democracy and active citizenship. So here I want to um, pass over to Aina, please, Aina. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, well, my name is Aina. I work at the Faroe Business College. Uh, I'll just give a brief introduction to active citizenship and some examples. Uh, active citizenship advocates that members of companies and, or nation states have uh, certain roles and responsibilities to society and the environment, although they may not have specific decision-making roles. Uh, an active citizen is then someone who takes uh, a role in the community who may help others and uh, be active on both local, regional, national, level and beyond even, and who wants to work uh, for democracy, for the uh, citizens' influence on decision-making and in advocating change. The definition uh, is uh, quite open and uh, loose, and there is certainly an overlap to the terms democracy and transparency, which we have also worked in, work with in our project. Some examples, you may find them, of course, yourself on the net. Uh, there are many examples of um, active citizenship uh, initiatives, uh, for instance, training programs. I saw one this morning where British Council uh, has this program for leadership and active citizenship. There are pet petitions. Uh, nowadays, in most cases, they are online uh, through social media and we probably all have participated in some petition or the other. There's even an active citizen network uh, uh, in Europe and uh, a platform, an online platform called Lumio, uh, where you can um, put discussion into action. There are examples of participating in school boards and other local and national boards and organizations, <clears throat> and also Examples of helping citizens, for, in, for instance, elderly people going online, which you also briefly uh, mentioned, uh, Torhild. Some of the examples from our own project include um, a citizen movement in the city of Javimpa in Finland, 
the goal of the movement is to make a city more beautiful, the city more beautiful uh, place to live in, for instance, by planting flowers. Uh, there is an example of citizens in a municipality which have entered into a dialogue about uh, just strategies for the future in a municipality in Denmark. There is the Democracy OS in Argentina, uh, where um, an organization has established a website where citizens in Buenos Aires can discuss and vote on proposals for new laws. And there's also the uh, Open Ministry initiative in Finland, which Taru, of course, will talk more about. So, over to you. Okay, over to me, I think then. Yes. Are you yes. able to hear me? Yeah. And there was a wish from Angela to, to make the camera picture a bit uh, bigger. Could you, Roberto, do that? But in the meanwhile, I will I will start. So I will be introducing you a case from Finland. The case was it is a concrete case, and it was identified during our project, our didact project, and it has very much to do with our project topics, which are active citizenship and democracy, and digital skills, and also transparency. And I will start. Uh, the introduction with a quotation, and it goes like this. That day, there was a jump in democracy from prehistory and the old model to digital age. There's a very new law in Finland according to which a citizen's proposal can be submitted to the parliament, to the Finnish parliament, and it has to be processed in parliament if it has at least 50,000 supporters, that is, 50, at least 50,000 signatures. And these signatures, uh, they can be either on paper or then digital online. And we have something that we call open ministry, which is not a ministry at all, and actually not even an official organization, but rather an open arena for citizens, for volunteers to work. And this open ministry provides an online platform to help campaign and collect the signatures to support uh, an initiative, a suggestion for a new law from the citizens. And this quotation that I just told you belongs to Alexi Rossi, who you can see also in the picture. He is a co-founder of open ministry. And with this uh, sentence, this quotation, he refers to the moment when 50,000 citizens, new citizens, had signed to support a new law in Finland about same-sex marriage. We didn't have that before. And Alex says that at that moment, when these 50,000 uh, signatures were there, he says that democracy was upgraded to the digital area, uh, a digital era, with the help of digital signature and a huge number of people expressing their opinions online and taking part in the official decision making in Finland. This uh, particular citizens it in it initiative, we called it Tahdon 2013, which means I do 2013, was really taken to the Finnish parliament and the parliament decided to accept the law on same-sex marriage in November 2014, and the president signed it in February uh, 2015, so beginning of this year. So this was the first law that started by a citizens' initiative and got more than 50,000 signatures and was processed in the parliament and was then actually accept accepted by the parliament. And actually, the minimum was 50,000 signatures, but this initiative got if I'm correct, I think 167,000 uh, signatures, so quite much more. So this was the first case, but I'm quite sure that it's not the only one. I'm pretty sure that there will be many more to come. 
during this project, we have made a short video on which this Alexei Rossi tells why this kind of service is very important and, and how the, the first really successful campaign was completed. I will copy the, the link to the video to the chat box so you can have a look at it later if you want to. Thank you. That was what I wanted to, to say today. I expect it's my turn now. And and my my role was to tell you a bit about transparency and the question about what does it mean. And that's why I'm putting up a map again, because um, one of the things we've been we've been uh, experiencing during this project, our project of the, of trying to find out a, about digital competencies and what they mean for for active citizenship and democracy, uh, the question is what are people really doing? Now we have we have um, examples like the ones that we have just heard about. Where, where we have all sorts of initiatives where people are trying to give citizens a better role in society. And, 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 and we, we mentioned, for example, here, uh, open ministry like, like, and, and, and democracy OS, which are websites which um, help people to participate in voting, etc. But transparency is about much more. It's about letting people know what's going on, giving them access to their data, help us know what's going on. And our societies have been using digital media and even forcing people to use digital media about to to be in contact with with their with their local government and national governments. And some of these, their initiatives have been quite interesting. We have a nice one in Iceland, which is called A Better City. And there you have people who, who can, you know, you can bring in a, a suggestion. Please um, put a playground in my, in my quarter or, or please note that there's no light going on in the, on, on this street. And, some people have been criticizing this this uh, for you're really just giving having people do the work for the municipality and give them the feeling that they are participating they they do have an influence but it's maybe just on the superficial level the question is you know when you're inviting people to this kind of discussion uh, what happens if you just allow them to participate in superficial things? Is it a way of mollifying people? And then we have the question, which, which if you go back to Turin, how, how competent are citizens um, using all this and being able to, to look up their data, being able to participate in change, and etc. And it's re we're really living in interesting times where lots of people are trying different things, but we haven't really um, defined the the the, uh, the the words we use, and we're really um, still looking for ways, both m means and being sure that the people really can participate, that they really know how to do it. So um, this ends our kind of presentation about what we've been learning and we, we, what we want to do. Jürgen, is it right? We, we, we want to divide people into smaller groups now, don't we? We, we want to uh, go out to the break room, breakout rooms, where you can choose to go into one of the rooms which is moderated by the four speakers you have had here. Okay. Now, so that's correct. So I, um, if you, I've just brought in this little pod here, and in front of my face. <laughs> but can you see 
up there, no, there, there's a little little man with a hand. And if you click on the on the on the um, arrow behind him, you can see all sorts of of messages. The the ones at the bottom are applause, laughter, slow down, and speed up. And what I'd like to ask you to do is to click on these according to which group you would like to chat in for a few minutes. What theme interests you? Digital competency, then you choose speed up. For example, and, and, and applause, I'm putting applause. And if you take a look at my name here on the left hand side, it's the second from the top, host NVL, then you can see there's a different sign. And it, well, it, it, it left. Ooh, la, la. Um, that was stupid. Look, we have to change this. Ah! We have to change this. I, 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 the, they all leave, but if I put raise hand and agree and disagree and stop away. So, um, agree, no, uh, raise hand is the top one. Can you see that? Raise hand for digital competency. And then we have um, agree for the next one. And then we have, uh, what's it called? Disagree. Do you understand me? It seems to, seem to function well. Um, yeah. We have, to, we, have got, what? we have got a full group of um, digital competency. Step away. Okay. So we, we need to move this here a bit so that we can see where everybody is. And I'm trying to make the pod bigger for for okay, so some of you have done this, some of you haven't. Um Um, we have got six people in the group for digital yeah. competence. Plus me, that yeah. makes seven. Okay, we can. That's a what we do now is we'll move these people to these groups. Let's see how that works. Now, and you can help me. Uh, with this, okay? We could just move them to the groups, the first group and the second okay. group. You sure. can see the groups down there. So the first group is digital wow. competency and you just drag them in there. You just, you, oh well, you don't drag them, you, you just break out room one, could you move away the map so that we get yeah. more clear? Of course, you can do that too, you know. I'm not the only one who can do this. Okay. Um, yeah, good. So, everybody wants to be in breakout room one.
What's going well, on with I'm your trying group? to pe put people into the groups. And the only people who have... So I've yeah. put everybody into, into uh, breakout room one. So they are there. And, and um, the other ones have... So, Turid, you should be in breakout room. Yeah, and I can't see the breakout room one, so I am yeah. helpless. Me too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, we have... Sorry, we, have, we are trying to do something which uh, we are not quite sure how to do, maybe. Look, I'll, let's see. This, this is so strange. It isn't working the way um, it was. I, when I tested it, it worked differently. Yeah. So why, why aren't you in the group? That what happens now? I I, I, di so I, I divided when we tested this. This worked, but now it doesn't work. Hmm. It's called the demo effect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and my 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 helpers here can't you help me anything i now i've distributed everybody evenly in different groups but we still don't we're still not yeah. entering the the breakout rooms i don't know why no well, can you explain us how do we That's enter what, the breakout it rooms it isn't it isn't going it isn't happening and we did it before we entered the yeah so mm. now it isn't but happening. should we change should we change the the plan and come if you could put everybody back into the same main room. Everybody we... is there. We've nobody's nobody's gone anywhere. They're all here. <laughs> I, I think. Okay. If we if we cannot uh, divide in groups, we will all, we will just yeah. make um, a common uh, chat mm -hmm. for everybody there. This was interesting. Okay, we'll just make a big chat area here so we can. So we can um Yeah, a big chat yeah. area would be good. I'll just open that just a minute. And breakouts. And now Everything is so slow on my computer. I think we're all up back now, aren't we? We're back, but we need the chat. In we need the chat window, and I'm trying to open yeah. that. That's what's going on here. And okay, that, this one. So, um, why don't we do it like this? That we. Here you have a big chat area, and the participants, if you would just put in some, some interesting questions here, and what, what, if you want to go a bit deeper, and, and you might even be able to enter what are called Turil, I think you should... And yeah, I, I have started. How should we make people yeah. digital competent? Any ideas? Going to courses? Yeah, of course. Um, but in a more effective way, how could we in, include uh, also old people who have never um, wanted to, uh, uh, to learn to use a computer? How... What, what's the what's the good ideas here? 
anybody has some nice ideas. Yeah, good. I can see that several people are typing now, so it will be interesting to see. <clears throat> Government must initiate training in digital skills. Mm -hmm. Use social situation applications. Motivation, yes. How could we motivate people? Uh, there is somebody uh, typing very heavy, heavily. Oh, it's me, sorry. But maybe it would be nice to have, have you other people in the, in the picture, just that so people can see who they're talking to. Yeah. Ah, there it is. I'm sorry about this. Yes. This was my fault. Carrot or stick, how to motivate? And what is the carrot and what is the stick in that case? <laughs> Always carrot, never stick. People must get involved in discussions about digital competence. Yeah, like you are now, you are involved in the in the discussion. That's that's uh, very good. It gives us very good ideas. Train the trainer program. Yeah. There is no self-value in digital inclusion. It mm. has to serve a purpose. I think that's very important. It has to serve a purpose. That was also what uh, SeniorNet said, that uh, when people don't find any interest in their computers, they will not use it. Of course not. It's not that fun to just um, uh, look at a computer and try to find something of interest. There must be something more in it. Mm -hmm. we, we will, um, we, we, ty we type this uh, webinar so we will take care of all and uh, take care and report all of your good ideas. So that's uh, very nice. Um, soon we will move over to um, democracy, Taru. You will but but perhaps perhaps uh, sorry Thorhild, perhaps we should make this poll to to get an idea of how serious a problem we are having so yeah. so 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 we can make the participants or all of us indicate how in a way how serious this problem is so yeah. if so robert sure could would you please move uh, yeah. put in the poll yeah, that we should do before we move to next item. There will always be someone who will stay stand outside. Yeah, that's likely. Mm -hmm. Sound disappeared. Um, I'm just it's trying it's to find this. My my, what's it called? My computer is getting so slow now. So I'm. My control of the situation is quite interesting. So here it is, should be coming now. Yeah. There it is. So we will all answer the poll, uh, which is soon coming up, and uh, then after that we will um, go further to next 
Next Is question. Is this big enough? Can you see this? Yes. So we have a question for you. Um, and if we think about how would you rate how would you rate the digital competence of your colleagues? Ah, very interesting. Have to. Mm -hmm. Proficient and independent is coming up as the winners so far. Um, most of us have now given votes, maybe some more. Yeah, very good. Thank you so much. It's, it's interesting. Uh, of course, it's a um, this means that we belong to um, the digital competent people here. Um, seem that there is very few experts, uh, but there is uh, also none without digital competence in our on our workplaces. Um, maybe the problem is um, more uh, out of the workplaces. Those who are not working, and we know that uh, a lot of the oldest people have no digital competence. Yes, so Helga is saying that uh, finds democracy often turning out being exclusive rather than being inclusive. I I can anticipate that that uh, is can be the case no, in all of our everybody. countries. I would say so. If everything goes digital. Do you quickly, does this mean? then that can be a problem because these changes they they need time. Sorry, what does this mean?
Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe we could ask our participants. Do you think? Do you have many examples of? of people who cannot participate. And we in, have a good example of that uh, in uh, democracy, what is Argentina. Transparency. Um, you can find a blog about it in our you cannot really, blog you know, address. Use their banks. Maybe we should write it once again, this with blog address where you find a different the blog. Because they have digital competencies. Um, Roberto, do you have you the correct blog address? Do you know of many? How? Maybe you, you could yeah. just yeah. write yes or no. Now that we're talking about the problem, voting, no problem. it would be interesting to know in which countries it is possible at the moment to, to vote uh, online. Because in Finland, in, in national elections, it's not. So we have here... Uh, hmm. I don't know uh, people, but people who choose not to Estonia, participate. I'm not sure um, if it is so there, but uh, I would. My guess would be yes, because they are so much ahead. The of older many generation a bigger problem. Respect. Most the elderly people. What about the Nordic Don't countries? want and don't lack interest. As far as and I know, that's the interest. We have had some pilots. Uh, also, I've seen. Um, I think all I of you have seen with, with the I interest. As soon as answer. some of the elderly people get get um, relatives, especially uh, grandchildren abroad, then they're suddenly interested in email and Facebook and Skype, etc. So, so this is typical adult learners who, who really learn new skills when they need them. Um, Taro, would you take up what Helgi is saying here? Hel can you can you see his his comment? Maybe you'd like to comment on that. Yes, we have a lot of systems where we are forced to use <laughs> ICT. It's uh, all well, all communication with the public authorities must be di digital now. Um, you, you can get some... Uh, some people may communicate on the old-fashioned ways, but you have to apply for that, and I don't know how difficult it is. Uh, I think with the number of persons who are applying for having mm -hmm. another kind of communication is and rather and high, but I think it depends I, I find not only on the digital competencies, it, it also depends a lot of being reluctant uh, for the, to the system's in, demand you know, or, voting, or, or something so, like, uh, so, like that. And in, so in I, don't think, it, I don't know if it indicated in a real very few people for other vote. kind of uh, so so there's a question will 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 digital media help to increase the in influence if people begin to see that they really can influence something No, no, but we have Johanny, Johanny, yeah, yeah it's, exactly. It's, it's waiting for us here. I'll put it. Uh, up. Let the chat go on. Yeah. Okay, uh, I have not made a presentation, uh, but if the chat is there, I can give you the link. So, if we can get the chat back into the middle window. Yeah, okay. Okay, so the thing is, we're talking about digital inclusion and democracy from very many perspectives. And there are all of us having very uh, different experiences based on our own work, our own surroundings, maybe our own parents or grandparents, depending. 
Um, and we have mentioned a number of pilots um, and examples of how you can work with digital inclusion with uh, different pilot projects or mm -hmm. with different initiatives like the citizenship initiative in Finland that was mentioned. The thing which needs to be done, I think, is to try and see whether there are major common concerns where education can play a role in facilitating the, the shift towards digital um, inclusion. And there's, a, there's in an interesting countries. thing here. Mona says service design issue, is course. also and an issue. The question is how so you many badly designed it. services, uh, better designed services attract more Lund, users. Uh, Flera, I think both, both Tore here, and, and to Jürgen have been collecting issues from both Denmark and Norway where, where years, people have, have been forced. Maybe you elaborate here. The of government and governance on how to work with digital inclusion and digitalization in general of society. Having looked at these four countries in the project, Sweden, Finland, Norway and Denmark, we have compiled reports to show what has been done in the past, taking for example the work done in Denmark with the digital citizenship agenda uh, as an example, and the work done in Norway with libraries as another example, and we are now trying together as a group and with all of your expertise and input uh, as a very welcome addition to see if there are recommendations that can be put forward that would guide the digital um, development of the Nordic countries. In the Nordic context, there are some issues which we share as uh, what we call sometimes the Nordic model the welfare state, the access to education, and very many similar educational facilities and institutions. So far, the discussion, as far as we know, about cooperation between the Nordic countries on a digital agenda for citizenship okay. has not been on the table. Um, we, so on one hand, the question is, it was mentioned in the chat something we who want is to responsible, do. What and some said, government should organize, government should finance, government should make sure that there are courses and trainings. Now that is one aspect that we might have a demand and expectation of the decision makers, policy makers and funders on how to work to an inclusive society. The other aspect is that there are things perhaps we as education persons working with different levels of education should also think about what is our role and responsibility and to do this we are trying to gather recommendations together. The project has been working for two and a half years. It's ending in August, and we have a final conference on the link that you see there in Copenhagen on the 20th of May, so very soon. Um, it's an open call uh, to participate in a one-day seminar where we want to openly discuss what we have discussed in this uh, webinar as well. What can we do together? What should be done together? And of course also, are there some things that we should not do, that we should be careful of doing? I have, as you perhaps, perhaps some of you saw in the chat, some very strong opinions about the things we should be careful about asking for. For example, preaching or, for example, forcing people, the, the stick approach to forcing people into digital um, inclusion, because I feel that they will not take it as their own. But that's up for discussion. All the materials are available online on the link that you saw. They are in the Nordic languages. So the recommendations as a draft, the policy reports of the four countries, and the beginning of a synthesis report. Um, we will uh, send out an invitation to all of you who are registered here uh, by email as well, if that's OK with the distance group of NVL. And I hope to see some of you in Copenhagen. Thank you very much, Johanny. Do we have uh, any questions con concerning uh, what Johanny just have talked about, or perhaps about the conference in Copenhagen?
somebody is typing, I can see. Johanny, why not preaching? I think I'll try to answer by, it's faster if I answer by voice than by typing. In my experience, it's very dangerous to try and preach because it means that you have seen something and you're trying to tell somebody. Um, there is a golden rule in journalism that says, show, don't tell. So we need to show the services. We need to show the effects of what you can achieve and accomplish. If I understand preaching as being, uh, you need to do this, this is important for you, trust me, believe me, I know what I'm talking about, I have done this and you should do it too, then this is a no-no in my world. This is a structure, this is a discussion we have in non-formal adult education all the time. Should we preach to people how they should live their lives or should we give them tools to live their lives? But if you with preaching mean we should spread the message that inclusion can be including you and that it can empower you, if that's what you mean with, with um, preaching, then it's okay for me. Um, it, it's concerned with um, user-friendly. It should be easy to use. It should be easy to, to find the right button to push. The, the web pages should be designed so that the user could find easily uh, her way and uh, yeah, many more things. But it's user-friendliness. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we have room for uh, some more questions or some more inputs. I can still see a lot of participants is typing. Okay. Takes a little time. <clears throat> I think. Well, I think that. Um, I think I will. We will let this chat stay open for a while, um, so we can have some more input from you because it's. It's. I think it's very, very relevant comments, all of it, and. Um, it would be very useful for us if you will take your time to to write your comments. But I will then say thank you to you, everybody for participating here. Thank you for you to the speakers, and um, even if we tried to show how we could use breakout rooms, it was not so very successful. But we will come back and do it better next time. So, hope to seeing you again next time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you for your patience.